सब्र भी देखा है तारीख की नजरों ने लम्हों ने खता की थी सदियों ने सजा पाई दीज वर्ड्स बाय मुजफ्फर राजमी कंटिन्यू टू एको थ्रू द सेंचुरीज बगदाद a population a city a capital with a million population whose army consisted of over 60000 soldiers was turned into ashes at the hands of the mongols in 1258 ad its grand library was destroyed the books were thrown into river tigris every structure that once stood glancing at the sky was demolished into the ground philosophers were hanged women were raped children never lived to see the light of the next day many more countries throughout the course of history which were once a center of learning and trade where cultures mingled were thrown into the dustbin of history as they could never recover from the plunders and massacre of war this trend of destroying culture whether it's intentional or collateral damage continues even in today's world due to the recent civil war in syria six out of six unesco heritage sites have been destroyed 50% of the population has been displaced and over 12% of the population either injured or dead war has ravaged countries beyond recognition and we needn't look further than kargil to see the horrible effects of war on a people I was one of the hundreds of children who witnessed the dreadful Indo-Pak conflict of 1999. Although just a seventh grader at that time, I still vividly remember that massacre it caused, the deaths, casualties, the damage to property, and even the mental trauma, which is immeasurable. The damage to infrastructure was catastrophic. Some people did not even have a proper roof over their head, nor a decent meal for their children. the national media discussed the kargil war at length but not even once was there a story on the hardships and the plights of the civilians a lot is lost in a war but we overlook something far more important more than anything we lose our identity our culture in a war and kargil wasn't any different What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about Kargil? War, right? Kargil today has become synonymous with war. The media has portrayed Kargil as a place ridden by war, and for good reason I suppose, because it has survived wars of 1962, 71 and then in 1999. But Kargil wasn't always just known for this. In the ancient times, known as Purig It was a thriving cosmopolitan trade center on the great Trans-Himalayan Silk Road. It was a melting pot of cultures, languages, religion, and most importantly, ideas. Traders and merchants from all over the world and in India used to come to Kargil from places like Central Asia, China, Kashmir, Punjab, and even from the far west. They would come to Kargil with their goods and they would break bread together. Even today, there are six different ethnic tribes living in Kargil. with their own unique traditions but of course it's not easy to live in a frontier town like kargil in today's time when india is launching space missions to mars we in kargil are still struggling with the basic facilities of internet mobile and road connectivity unemployment is on the rise industries are scarce opportunities are minimal the constant border conflict and the images of war zone hasn't really helped the situation so in a scenario like this which has lasted for over 6 decades the people have lost respect and appreciation for their own culture their social identity and this i believe restricts any kind of mental physical or infrastructural development in a society we have an identity crisis after the 1999 war I was sent away from Kargil to pursue my studies which is when I realized the importance of my culture my identity where I come from you know one must take pride in their own culture because a tree is only as strong as its roots 
So from an outsider's perspective, I was able to understand what Kargil really stands for. And at the same time, from an insider's perspective, I was able to understand what we have lost, what are the real issues, and what we need to change. So my circumstances gave me an opportunity to make an attempt to rebuild this fallen metropolis. But why do we need post-war restoration for communities? Simply to rebuild the confidence in the people, in their culture, in their identity. To start a restoration process, we need to start a conversation. For us, this conversation started with a project we did called Unlock Hunderman Museum of Memories. Hunderman is a 500-year-old abandoned settlement in Kargil, which used to be a thriving trade center on the Silk Road. Now it is known to be located right on the line of control between India and Pakistan. Years of interaction with different cultures have shaped their everyday life, which have manifested in the way they practice their agriculture, their religion, their arts and crafts, and so on. But soon after the partition, this way of life changed completely. And as the trade stopped, this village was lost in oblivion. Their families got dislocated, and everything around them just fell apart. The story of Hunderman is also the story of Kargil. But when we did this project, Unlock Hunderman, these ruins got transformed into a heritage experience. Small museum galleries were curated using the same narrative of war to get people to talk about Kargil. This unfinished embroidery on this piece of muffler is a testimony to the sudden migration of people across borders. Out of the three patterns, only the first one is complete, the second one only half done, and the third one not even started. The person had put the needle in the piece of cloth to finish the day's work, only never to return. The embroidery remains unfinished. The muffler remains unworn. These artifacts are some of the many objects that we discovered in those empty houses of Hunderman. We opened this museum in June 2016, and it was open till September 2016, during which we had a footfall of around 600 people, both locals and travelers, who really gave momentum to this conversation. It's been 18 years since the Kargil War. Infrastructural restoration has long been completed, but social and cultural restoration has just begun. I believe for any post-war restoration to begin, the most crucial and the most challenging step is to create what I call a social collective. It involves identifying a cause that brings the community together and creates a movement. In 2015, we put together 20 student volunteers from all over India, and we asked them to explore these ruins and also the new settlement of Hunderman. They started collecting stories, they started discovering ancient traditional ways of life, and they were amazed by what they found. And the locals equally shared that amazement. And they also started taking interest in that restoration process. And as the project grew, more and more people started visiting Hunderman, and they started talking about it. So soon the community came together, and they also started taking pride in, that, in those old relics, and those old objects which they had discarded otherwise years ago. So when your community comes together, when your community, community comes alive to an idea like this, a social collective is established. Now the conversation had started, the social collective established. But now the challenge is to sustain it, especially within the community. And this is a question that was asked to me oftentimes by the community when we were working there. We are still working there. So why do we need to save these ruins? And why do we need to collect these old, you know, old objects? So there are two sides to this coin. One is that people love to hear stories. No matter how indifferent we are to our own heritage, we still want to know where we come from. And the second, 
is that by restoring our culture, we can generate a new source of income. So by giving them an alternate source of income to the already existing ones, we gave them a reason to think about their culture in a different way. So what we did was that we tried to empower the community to lead the restoration process. Currently, there is a museum management committee that has been formed in, uh, that comprises of young entrepreneurs from that region who are planning to set up a small cafe and a store where they want to display you know, their traditional cuisine, their local handicrafts and locally grown fruits and so on. This is a huge leap for Hunderman and also for Kargil. Today, Hunderman is in the top five must-see places in Kargil when you visit. And now when people talk about Kargil, it's not just about the war. By restoring, by, by restoring its heritage and culture, the people of Hunderman now have a renewed hope for prosperity. They've started looking at their heritage as an asset rather than a liability. We do not look at heritage as an object to be kept inside and preserved inside a museum. Rather, we look at heritage as a continuous moving chain of interlinked events that we are all a part of. Conservation processes can only be successful if heritage belongs to people. We revived something intangible, which cannot be touched, but can only be breathed in. In the end, I would just like to leave you with this thought. War ends for governments, never for people. Thank you.